Um, good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you for um, coming on to today's webinar. Um, so today we'll be looking at Nemisma CRM module. Um, so the CRM module is basically to manage your leads and um, your customers. It's a customer relationship uh, management system as well as lead management. Um, so um, I'm going to show you how you'd get your leads into the system, nurture them through the conversion process on board on board them and them becoming a client eventually. We'll also go through how you'd set everything up um, from your emails to um, engagement letters to terms and conditions. Um, and, and we'll also have a look at the company secretarial module. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so um, if you could quickly type within the chat window saying you're able to see my screen, that will be really helpful. Um, and of course, while we're waiting for the yeses, um, if you did have any questions throughout the webinar, um, please do post them on the Q&A and I will answer them as we go along. Um, and I'll also be sharing this video with everybody um, uh, once the webinar is complete. Uh, so uh, so just, a, just a quick yes or, or a no if you are able to see my screen or not. Um, and if 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 you're if I am edible, so if if you're able to hear me well, okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get started. So what we'll do is we'll we'll start from scratch. We'll first go through how you'd set everything up, and then I'll go through um, all of the different function functions within the CRM module. So let's start by clicking on set up on the left menu. That's the last option on the left. So the first thing that you would set up is your practice details. So you'll basically um, select if your practice is a company, an LLP, a partnership or a sole trader. And depending on what you select, you'll have further fields here that you need to complete. Um, if you have a website, do put that on here. Um, telephone number, you are able to upload a logo um, within this set within within um, on this page. Um, the recommended size is 170 and 60 pixels, um, and it should be an image file. Um, all of these are accepted um, JPEG, JPG, PNG and GIF files. Um, so you're uploading the logo here to produce on brand um, quotes and contracts. Um, if you do have a practice tagline, do put that in here. It could be something like best accounting service or, or anything along those lines, um, whatever it is. If you do put that, put that in here, into that here, this will come up within the footer of your quotes and contracts. Um, and if you're VAT registered, just say yes and then enter the VAT number. Um, but if you're not VAT registered, say no. The reason why we're asking this question is because when you produce a quote or a contract, if you're not VAT registered, then the VAT line will not come into the contract or the quote. Um, on the contract um, and then finally it'll be sole trader details if it's a, if you're a sole trader or if you're a partner it'll be partner details director details if you're a company or member details if you're a llp and then once you've filled in all of these details click the save button and then let's move on to com comms so this is where you'd set up your emails and sms so for emails um I would recommend using the default Nemisma SMTP option. If, um, if you don't have your own SMTP details to hand, um, just use default Nemisma's SMTP um, and enter your email address within this field and click the save button. So what happens when you click the save button is you will get an email from Amazon Web Services to click on a verification link. And once that's complete, your emails are set up on the CRM module. So you'll be able to send out quotes, contracts, communicate with your leads and customers. Now, moving on, let's talk about SMS. So you are able to send one way SMS messages to your leads and um, customers. So this is, again, a one way SMS system. So, so within the sender ID field, um, you can enter your, your practice's name or your name um, 
it's a maximum of 11 characters without spaces um, or special character and special characters so maximum of 11 characters no spaces no special characters once you've um, entered this here you can click on save and this will be activated for you between 24 within 24 to 48 hours so now um, this is similar to let's say um, um, you have subscribed to Vodafone so um, so it's similar to receiving a message from your uh, from from your phone provider or, or your internet provider or um, or your GP practice. So for in this instance, it'll be your customers or leads receiving SMS messages from their accountancy practice or bookkeeping practice. Um, so that's the idea behind um, the center ID. So moving on, let us sign off. So this is where you'd um, enter kind regards and then you're also able to add any image files um, that you'd like to add within the letter sign off. Um, and then let's talk about header and footer template a little bit later on. So you can basically personalize it or use Nimisma's default option, but we'll talk about it a little bit later on. So just um just make sure that you click on the save button within each of the sections so each because because each of these sections have custom um um, um have um have custom have their own um i'm sorry um have their own further tasks that need to be done for example when you click save here you'll receive a verification link from amazon web services and if you click on save within the sms setup section then that triggers um, 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 a task for us to to um, um, in the back end um, to to get the SMS set up. So etc. So do make sure you click on the save button. But if we proceed, let's go into workflow. So within workflow, um, Nemesma has some default email templates that you are able to send to your leads, clients, or um, salesperson, or sorry, by salesperson, I mean lead owner or account manager for clients. So just to explain this a little bit more, so we've got a lead confirmation statement marketing email. You can click on the I button to see exactly what it says. So if I click on this I button, so this would basically mean, um, uh, it'll be an email that says, along the lines of your confirmation statement filing due date is tomorrow um, um, is tomorrow or within a week uh, please do let us know um, if you'd like help uh, filing this and we've got year end accounts marketing email that you can send to your leads um, so this is a way of upselling um, we've got client confirmation statement deadline email client year and accounts deadline emails so different types of e um, so emails for your lead and client so if you enable this you can then select that you want to send this either to the lead or the lead owner so the lead owner will be the salesperson within your company um, or um, emails that are sent to client can be sent to either the client themselves or the account manager who's handling the client within your company and then you can then select when you want to send this email. So, for example, I've selected I want to send this marketing email to the lead 14 days before to the leads 14 days before confirmation statement due date. So th these are system default emails that you're able to enable. However, you are also able to add your own workflow. Um, within this section um, it could be a workflow that triggers an email to be sent out that triggers an sms to be sent out to your lead or your client or contacts um, or it could be a task um, that you create um, within the calendar for you to perform later so for example it could be that you want to set up a task um, to uh, um, to send an email to all of your clients um, um a happy new year message uh, on the 31st um, um on the 1st of january or, or um or it could be a payment reminder email so um so so you could you could you could set it up so that um 
um, if a client of yours has not paid you, you can set it up so that you send a payment reminder email. So, uh, so lots of different options here. Um, it, it, it could be a quarterly touch base with your customer, uh, with all of your customers. It could be newsletters that you're going to send out. Um, so, etc. Um, so, lots of uh, potential here with um, the new workflow option. So, something for all of you to explore. Uh, but if I then now move on to pricing. So Nemisma's quotes and contracts um, functionality um, is based on value-based pricing. So we have done a lot of market research and we have come up with um, a default set of um, packages and services and as well as pricing drivers. Uh, for example, if, if someone um, someone's turnover, if a company's turnover is a million, then um, there's there's a driver in in the system to to say that okay I will charge so much for their VAT return filing or their corporation tax return filing etc. So it's it's based on value based pricing. So we so with a lot of um, after a lot of market research we have come up with a list of packages services along with the prices and the drivers. Um, but this is something that you are able to go in and update. So if you want to update say um, uh, the packages or add new add your own packages because you might have your own set of packages that you offer your clients so you can come into this section and and edit those details of course if you did want help with that we are happy to help you all you need to do is send us an excel file with with as much detail as possible um, of all of your packages and services and we can help you get this set up um, let's move on to letter of engagement now So for terms and conditions, you can use the Mismas template or you can upload your own template. If you're going to be using the Mismas template, then we have templates from the different accounting bodies like, for example, AAT or ICB. Um, so you just need to select the, um, F, um, the accounting body that you're affiliated to. And also, um, if you are going to be using the Mismas template, then you need to enter a continuity accountant name and address within these fields. So this will be in the event that you are unable to um, carry out the services that you promised your customer, your client base, um, this continuity accountant will take that work um, on behalf of you. Um, and then if you did have a terms and conditions URL, you can you can paste, um, you can enter that within this field. Now, the escalate to is basically if there's an, any issues, who in the company um, or who in your practice um, would escalations go to? So you will need to save that information here and then click the save button. So let's scroll down and look at eSign. So when you're producing a contract for a company, you have an, um, so Nemisma generates a director guarantee letter. This is basically when a com let's say a company goes into, um, um, goes bankrupt and, and can't pay, your, uh, pay for your services that you provided them with. So in that case, if you, if you, if, if, if the contract includes a director guarantee letter and that's been signed, then the director guarantees that he or she will make um, the payment on behalf of the company. So that's what this option is about. Now, this is rec it's recommended that you turn um, you you have this turned on. Of course, when you're producing a contract, you are able to remove the director guarantee letter on an, on on a on a case by case basis. Uh, but best practice is to just have this as yes within the settings. But but we'll leave that to you. Um, and then the authorized signatory's name, um, and then also um, upload. Um, an image file, uh, the recommended size is 360 into 120 pixels. Um, uh, an e-signature, uh, if you upload that here, when the contract is sent for signing, etc., your signatures are there within the contract as well. 
um, and do make sure you enter put in an email address here so this will be um, so that when the contracts are signed you get a copy of it as well via email um, so do make sure you put you enter an email address here and LOE font is basically letter of engagement font. So these are the fonts available um, and, and you can use any of these. And once done, click the save button. So moving on, let's look at the quote format and the letter of engagement format. So we've got two different types of quote format. You can preview these using this PDF button and choose which one you'd like to use. And then once chosen, click on the save button um, with the letter of engagement um, we've got two types of templates for companies and llps and two types of templates for sole trader your private clients and partnership so you could you could view which ones you'd prefer to use um, and then you can choose that and click the save button customized additional terms now nemisma automatically includes payment terms within um, the contract however if you are able to preset four different templates these will be like one or two liners that that you want to add on um, um, and evaluate and add on a case-by-case -case basis um, um, depending on who you're creating a contract for so this is just some preset templates that that you're able to set up um, to to utilize when you're producing a contract for a client so let's move on to templates so within templates this is where you're able to see all of the workflow emails that you've created within workflow um, the um, the terms and conditions uh, the director guarantee letter the payment terms um, and the quote and contract PDF header and footer template. So you can view them or and also edit them from this page. So now let's go into payment. So when you're producing a contract within uh, during that process, you will be selecting how your clients um, are going to be paying you. Are they going to be paying you via direct debit or are they going to be paying you via bank transfer? So within this section, you can add other additional types of uh, other additional payment types as well. Um, for example, go cardless, Stripe, PayPal or standing order. Um, so if you select go cardless, for example, you can select yes, where it says active, and then you can get an access token from your go cardless account and put this in here and click the save button. So what this does is um, when you create a contract and send it off to your clients, it also sends them a link um, to click on to complete the go cardless mandate. So um, that's about the payment side of things. So moving on from there, let's go into agent authorization. So within agent authorization, um, so through Nemisma, you are able to file 64-8s. So within agent authorization, this is where you would enter your government gateway ID, username and password, and also your agent IDs. So, so, uh, a lot of you might have the same details um, so if that's the case just enter them just repeat them and enter them within all of these sections um, and then click the save button and then let's go into company's house So if you're going to be using the MISMAS company secretarial module to file your CSO once um, or um, to incorporate new companies, et cetera, then you need to have a presenter account with Companies House. And if you do have those details, just fill those in here and click the save button. But if you're not going to be using um, this module, just select no and we won't ask you for the details. Um, so this is the basic setup um, within uh, the CRM module. Um, 
now let me quickly touch base on the user side of things i'm going to ignore invoicing for now because because um, the development team are still working on that side of things but let's go into users so within users um when when you have an account created on Nimisma, um, the compliance side of things, um, the main and and we create a CRM instance for you. The main, um, I mean, enable a CRM um, account for you. The main contact of the business automatically gets access to CRM. However, let's say a new employee joins the company, um, and you add them on the compliance side of things. So this is Namisma. Um, so when you log into Namisma, you log into the agent dashboard. So when you log into the agent dashboard, this is where you would add your users in. So when you add a new user in, not all users would need access to Namisma CRM. Um, the reason being, you might just need um, um, account managers and um, salespeople using the CRM module or an administrator using the CRM module. You wouldn't need um, all of your users on the CRM module. So that's the reason why um, when you do add them um, onto uh, the section, that's the second user, you'll need to make sure you come into account and set up users and add them here as well. But do make sure you add them in here using the same username and password from the agent side of things. That's the compliance side of things. So this is it with the main setup. What we'll do is now we'll go ahead and look at other functionalities from adding leads into the system to converting them into a client. And also let's look at the company secretarial module. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into dashboard on the left menu. So within dashboard, um, you have some KPIs on the top um, to basically say um, how many new leads you've generated in the last 30 days, how many conversions you've had in the last 30 days, the signed value in the month, um, and also any year end deadlines in, um, within the next 30 days, and the total number of your clients. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead so you'll find these KPIs throughout the module. Actually, you'll find this on the leads page, on the clients dashboard, on the quotes and contract section, as well as onboarding um, and company secretarial. So let's go ahead, click on the add button and we'll click on new lead. Now, before I add a new lead, quick message. If you did want to send bulk email messages or bulk SMS messages, this is where you would do it from. So we'll just click on send SMS or send email to do that. So let's go ahead, click on new lead and add a new lead in the system. So first I'm going to put in the contact details of this lead. So we'll, we'll just say, uh, Miss Nevi, so that's my full name, and then we'll just say Raj. And then you can print a phone number or an email. So I'm just going to print my email. And this email out opt out um, is basically um, if they if they do not want to receive any marketing emails then you need to have this ticked. And if they agree to um, receive marketing emails, then you can uncheck this and you can also upload a file which shows, um, say they might have signed something to say uh, uh, they are happy to receive marketing emails from you. So you can actually upload that document as a proof. So we'll just leave it as opt out. Um, and then let's go ahead and add the address in. So I'm just going to put in the postcode. And what Numisma does is, uh, Numisma uh, links in with the post office, so it automatically picks up um, the addresses. So we'll just go ahead and select the address. You can also manually enter the address as well. So then we'll click on next. And then 
it'll be the inquiry date and then the inquiry type. So the inquiry type is basically to say, are they a private client? Are they a sole trader? Are they um, an LLP partnership or company? So now private means individual client where they only want your help with filing, um, say self-assessment tax returns. Um, so we'll select company. Uh, and then after you select company, then uh, you'll need to select what the business type is. If they're a small business, large business, property, contractor, construction or partnership. So we leave it, um, leave, leave it as small business. Um, and then uh, we can go ahead and allocate a salesperson. Then it will drop that down. So you can select a salesperson within your practice. Um, and then also you can, you can allocate offer codes. Um, you could say, um, uh, uh, you, can, you can add a channel uh, as well. So how did they come across, um, 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 find out about you? Was it a referral? Was it through digital marketing events, et cetera? Um, and also you can select what the first contact method um, was. Was it by email, telephone, live chat, et cetera? Just select email and then any other sources, you can enter that. It's a free form, um, it's, it's a free text um, box. So we'll click on next to go, go to services required. So now here you can select um, the service frequency if it's going to be a, an ongoing service or a one-off service or both. So for the purpose of the webinar, I'm going to select ongoing. And then I'm going to say the frequency is monthly and we can go ahead and select all of the services that you're going to be providing them with. So we'll say bookkeeping, payroll, final accounts, corp tax and company secretarial. And then once that's selected, we'll click on next. So the next will be to enter the company name. So now within this section, if the company is yet to be incorporated, then you'll need to tick this and then what you can do is you can enter the anticipated company name and the MISMA will check the company's house register to see if this company name is available for you to use. If yes, then you can, once they become your client, you can then incorporate them using the company secretarial module. However, if the company is already, um, um, has been incorporated and, and they've been trading for a while, you can search the company's house register to bring in the company details. So let's just go ahead and type in So we'll just say um, And then it drops the menu down. And we could just select. So it searches the company's house register and then you can select from that and it automatically fills in all of the other details. Um, then we can go ahead and click the next button. And then we can select the nature of business. So we'll just say um, technology. Um, and then you can enter the trading um, address as well. So for this, you could just click on copy contact details address, and then that gets filled in automatically because you would have filled in the contact details address within contact details. That, that was the, one of the first questions that was asked. So once this is done, you could go ahead and click the next button. So now um, the lead is created in the system and let me show you the functionalities around, um, um, around the emails, SMS and the document portal, et cetera. So um, from here, from the top right, you can add warning messages that will come, uh, that will show up as a ribbon on the top of the page. So for example, if this lead doesn't like to be phoned and only wants to be contacted by email, you can put that there on top. Um, and you can create a quote from here. You can, if you didn't need to delete the lead from, um, from your list, you can just click on delete lead. But otherwise, all of the details that you entered while creating the lead would be here. Um, 
so operational details, inquiry details, et cetera. So what we'll do is we'll go into uh, email. So you are able to click on send email to, to communicate with your um, lead. So now currently, um, you'll only be able to see the outgoing emails that you've sent to your leads um, or even your clients. But in the future, you will be able to see on the screen um, their responses as well. So when they respond to you, you'll be able to see those as well. And you'll be able to just manage your communication through the CRM module. This I know is, is, is something that the development team are working on. I won't be able to give you a timeline for this as of yet, but this is definitely that the team are working on. However, you will be able to send emails to leads via here, and that information will be stored um, on this page. Moving on to SMS, again, SMS, so the SMS function is a one-way SMS function where you are able to send SMS messages to your leads and your clients or contacts. And then documents. Um, so let's say you send a contract to this lead and they sign it, you will find that contract within here, the signed contract. But if there's any um, con um, so if there's any document that you want to attach here, you are able to do that by clicking on the add document button. And then if we go into notes, here you're able to leave internal notes and save, and that will create a note here and your colleagues can actually go in and click on the reply button to post a reply to this note and then within history you'll be able to see who, uh, when this client uh, lead was record was created or or if there's any other information let's say an sms was sent so you'll, you'll find that audit trail here on this page so now that they've become a lead, let's go ahead and create a quote and then eventually a contract. And let's see how that process works. I'm just going to click on create quote from the top right. And it's automatically filled in all of these details. We'll just click on recurring service and go ahead and, and I'll show you how that's done. So We'll click on next. Okay, so when, if a client detail is missing, you will receive a error message like this, and you'll also receive a link to go in and update that data. So it's quite helpful. So to update this data, what we'll do is we'll click on um, the button that says click here. And it opens up on a new tab. So uh, that was probably the trading details. So there we go. So we'll need to update this one, England and Wales, and we'll just click on save. And we'll go back to pricing. And now if we select next, it should go through. Perfect. So, Within here, because it's going to be recurring services, you'll need to select a package. Again, um, this is Namisma's standard packages um, that's here. Uh, you are able to edit it to make it your own or add new packages um, and, 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 um, and instead of calling it premium standard and light, you could call it something else. So we'll go ahead and say that they'd like the standard package. Um, and then it automatically ticks whatever's there under the stamps package. These are all preset within the setup section. And again, if you did need help with this, we will be happy to help you set your pricing up. So let's go ahead, click on next. So these are the pricing drivers. Now let's say your lead is sitting right in front of you or they are on a Zoom call or on, on the phone. So you'll basically go through all of these questions. So you'll ask them, so what's their yearly turnover? What's their VAT frequency? So you'll basically go through all of these questions and then the pricing that comes up, the quote will be based on 
these details for example how many bookkeeping transactions um, um, that they need um, um, help with or what type of self-assessment return that they need to file do they have capital gains uh, do they have rental properties so the pricing will really depend on um, what you select here so let's just go ahead click on the next button So this is the package quote. So what this page does is it brings across all of the different packages so, so that you're able to add, let's say discounts and premiums to these and you're able to include, so where it says include in quote. So instead of just sending them a standard package quote, you could send them a quote for your standard and premium package. And then it'll be up to them to select which package they'd like to go. So by doing this they might see the value of going for a little bit um, of a more expensive package because they get more services that they'd like to have so in that case we produce a comparison chart to show the difference between the two um, um, the two or three packages so for now what we'll do is we'll select premium and we'll select standard and then within here, you're also able to select how they're going to pay you. Are they going to pay yearly, half yearly, quarterly or monthly? And then you can also select the payment type it could be direct debit or bank transfer. And then, as I said, you can add discounts and premiums to the quote. And let's go ahead, click on the next button. So if you did have an ad hoc quote that where they needed a one off service, you will you will see you will cross through um, that um, within, within within the steps of creating a quote and a contract. But now this terms and conditions side of things, this is the preset templates that I was talking to you about within the setup section. So within the setup section, um, I said that you are able to add one or two lines um, and set up four different templates that you can use. Um, uh, from um, on a case by case basis. Um, so this is where you would select them that from if you did want to use one of those. But if not, just go ahead and click on next. So this is the quote. Of course, it won't be Namizma's logo, it'll be your logo here. Uh, the logo that you've uploaded by the setup from within the setup section. Uh, and then this is the comparison chart that I was speaking about. Um, so, for example, tax investigation cover um, is available within the premium package, but not within standard. And this might be something that's important to this company um, or registered office service or management accounts, etc. Then they can review the details, the prices. And then this will be the statement of facts. So they exactly know what they'll be paying for. So in the future, if, if their yearly turnover, say, went to 200,000 um, 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 200, pounds or, or a million, etc., then you can um, update, you can increase their prices accordingly. Or let's say um, their yearly turnover has gone below 85K, then you can um, charge them a little bit less, lesser. Um, so you could click on send quote to send this off to your lead so they can um, so they can have a look at this and, and then come back to you with an answer as to if they want to go for the standard or the premium package. But what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead, click on skip or go to go to contract. So this is where once the lead has come back to you after looking at the quote, you'll select if, they are, if they've chosen the premium or the standard package. So let's just say they've chosen the premium package. And this, this says, you know, um, this gives you the information of all of the services that you're going to be providing them with, um, as well as um, the, pay, um, the payment type, um, the frequency, um, and, you can also change the date of first installment. Um, 
so if they're going to be doing it on the first of November or the second of November, etc. Um, and then let's go ahead, click on generate contract. So within here, you've got the engagement letter. Um, if you had selected direct debit, then you would see a direct debit mandate form as well within here, the listed um, uh, within the documents list. Um, and you, uh, we've included the director guarantee letter uh, by default because we said yes within setup. But if you didn't want to do that, you can just un uncheck this option. So let's go ahead, click on generate and review contract. So here, um, if they're sitting in front of you and they've already agreed, you don't need to, what you could just do is you could just click on mark is signed. Uh, but, but however, you will want to send that to them using the send button so they can sign the document and send that back to you. So this will be via e-signature. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just click on preview so I can quickly show you the format of um, the contract. So I'm gonna click on preview and I'm just going to stop the screen share so that I can share the correct screen. To that. And, perfect. So this is um, the con. Um, the contract, the letter, appendix one, the statement of facts, appendix two will be your terms and conditions and any additional terms that you add on as well. Then you've got the terms and conditions. So, so it's quite thorough. The terms, terms and conditions are really thorough. So there's there's around twenty one pages. So I won't go through all of them. So this. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go back to the system and have a look at how to go through the next steps. So let's say they've signed. Um, the contract, but for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to click on mark assigned so that I can show you how you will then go about onboarding. So let's say they're happy with the contract and they've signed it. So that's done. We'll just click on continue. And we'll go into quote and contract on the left. So this is where you are able to see the signed value, the contract signed in the last 30 days and the contract send as well. So the reason why it's in red and it's it has a down um, and uh, and a downward arrow is because um, uh, the number of contracts sent in the last 30 days is has uh, has is um, has gone down um, and the contract signed as well. The number of contracts signed was probably more in the previous month. Um, so we'll click on onboarding on the left menu and we'll go through the onboarding steps now. So now from lead, they've gone to um, onboarding. They've signed the contract, they've gone to on onboarding. So what we'll do is we'll click on, so start on the right, start, and then we'll go through and complete the onboarding process. So this will be the contact details for that company. Um, so we'll just say, this is a director and we'll also put in a phone number. And we'll click on next. So this will be the company details. That's automatically come through. We'll click on next. Uh, this will be the trading details. Then we'll click on the next button. This will be marketing information. And it's something that you would have already entered while creating the lead, or you can change it here as well. 
Then if we click on next, this will be the operational details. This will come through automatically from the contracts. Then we'll click next. And this is the software they're going to be using for the different um, services, bookkeeping, final accounts, company secretarial, payroll, and self-assessment. So this is important to uh, uh, add that information here because later on when we create, um, um, when we complete the onboarding process, what happens is there will be a section where we'll be creating these records on Namisma compliance. So you can do, you can perform all of these um, uh, services for them. You can provide all of these services for them. And we'll click on next. So the next is the KYC check. So you'll just need to click on verify now. And then you'll need to put in all of these details. So let's just go ahead and let's say 31, 01, 1989. And let's say um, it's passport or driving license. I'll select passport. Then we'll print a passport number. And then we'll print a passport expiry as well. And then you're able to attach documents, ID proof, address proof, um, and then we'll go ahead and add the address in. Oh, I think I've selected the wrong address by mistake. We'll just manually update that. It's fine. And you can click on submit digitally. Um, so we um, link with Credit Safe to provide you with this functionality. So um, for the purpose of the webinar, we'll just click on pass manually to go to the next stage. So pass manually. So if you had submitted this digitally, you would get a pass or a fail and as well as a score. So we'll go ahead, click on move to second stage to move to the second stage of the onboarding process. Now, if you did want to add any other contact, uh, um, um, any other um, directors on here for KYC, for know your customer, to, um, you are able to do that by clicking on add KYC. But let's just click on next and carry on with the next steps. This is if you want to create a self-assessment client for the director, if you need to file the self-assessment tax return, if you do, fill in all of these details but, and then click the save button. So we'll just click on next. So this is where you can click on required for 64-8 and you're able to submit digitally to HMRC um, the different forms, one for PAYE, CIS, um, corporation tax, self-assessment, etc. So you can file your 64-8s from here digitally to HMRC. So we'll just click on not applicable for now, and then we'll just say not applicable and click the save button. And then we'll click on next. So the next stage will be the professional clearance. So let's click on required. So you are basically able to tick all of the details that you require from the previous accountant. And then when you fill in all of these details, the previous accountant's details, and you click the save uh, button here to the bottom towards the left, what happens is Namisma creates a portal access for the previous accountant to upload these documents to you via a portal. Instead of them posting these to you, they can just upload this via a portal um, um, and you will be creating that portal access for them by simply um, entering all of these details and clicking the save button. It'll come up with a email that you're able to edit as well and send. So for now, we'll just click on not applicable. We'll just say not applicable and save. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. So this will be the compliance data. So if you have VAT details, the VAT details, you can go ahead and select yes, or if registration is required, et cetera, and fill in the relevant details. The same thing, similarly, you'll do the same thing for payroll as well. And then HMRC details, 
if you have HMRC details for this um, company, you can put that in here. Um, and then the company authorization code will need to go in here and then click on the save button. But for now, we'll just click on next. So this is tasks. So as part of the onboarding um, process, there will be certain things that you need to do before um, you complete their onboarding. So for example, you'll want to send them a welcome email, a welcome pack with all of the information in relation to who do they who they need to contact um, um, for, um, for administrative tasks or who they need to contact to ask information about their filing, um, their tax return, their accounts or advisory deed um, um, or advisory services. So, so you'll want to put in all of these information um, and your contact details on a, on a welcome pack. So you you can create a task um, and, a, and a date of when you're going to be performing this task and add the add these tasks as part of your onboarding process. It could also be a welcome call, for example. Then we'll click on next. So the next step would be to create the company on the compliance side of things. So to push the company from CRM to compliance so you can start working on their books on on bookkeeping you can start uh, filing their VAT returns you can start doing their final accounts corporation tax self-assessment returns etc so to do that you'll just check all of these details if something is incorrect you'll click on edit client and you'll go and edit the details so you'll just verify all of these details and if you're happy you'll just click on the create button and what this will do is this will create a record on the compliance side of things. So it will link it through to the other side um, on Nemisma. Um, and that's it. So you've now completed the onboarding process for this um, for this client. So what we'll do is we'll click on client details to go into the client's record because I'd like to show you how you can create a portal access so that the director of this client um, of this company can access um, documents that you upload for them or they upload themselves. So we'll go into client details. So all of these details, like client details, uh, the basic page one details, all all we've all we've entered this during the lead, um, during the onboarding process, during you know getting them into um, the system as a lead, etc. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into notes. You'll also be able to see the notes that you added when they were a lead, uh, and you can add more notes as well if you needed to. Um, so you've got the email, SMS function, you've got the job section. So after they become a client, let's say you want to provide them with advisory services um, and you want to uh, track those um, on the system. So you can do that via the job section. You can click on add job and add those details here um, and track them here on the client profile. Um, and um, if I jump to summary now and go into contacts on the left menu and i'm going to click on the contact name so i'm going to show you how to create a portal access so if you look now on the top right it says portal inactive and it's in red now to create a portal access so they are able to access all of the documents you'll need to go into operations and then uh, you can tick this um, button that says portal user. And what happens when you do that and click on save changes is they receive an email with their portal login details. And when that portal becomes active, this will no longer read portal inactive, but instead it will read portal active. So, um, so now I hope this was useful um, um, and, and I hope um, um, everything was clear in terms of how you'd set up the CRM module, uh, your emails, SMSs, your pricing, etc., and how you'd get leads into the system through to quotes and contracts, onboarding, and then 
they become a client. Um, of course, if you did need to uh, upload data in bulk, uh, and if you had lots of clients, we offer a data migration service and you just need to contact us. I'll provide you with the contact details towards the end of the webinar, because um, I want to show you the company secretarial module as well. Um, so let's go into company secretarial on the left menu. So again, here you've got um, the KPIs on top, which tells you um, the accounts deadlines within the next 30 days, the confirmation statement deadlines, the total number of companies within company secretarial, and um, the companies, um, and then the companies you're dealing with. Um, so um, let's go ahead and open this company. And let's say you want to submit um, the confirmation statement for this company. So to do this, you'll click on submission and then you'll click on sub CSO one. And then you'll go through all of these steps, verify all of the details, and then finally submit this off to company's house. And if we just go back, So you are able to submit SHO1, um, and then you are also able to edit name, detail, registered address, etc. So any of the details, when you update them, what will happen is the MISMA, the company secretarial module, will prompt you to make, uh, to submit the changes that you've made to, um, to the record to company's house. And when you go into company secretarial on the left menu, So within here, you'll be able to access all of the filings made from within this KPI. So you'll be able to drill down into all of the filings made and you'll be able to um, get status, poll for response from company's house. Because usually when you file, when you, when you file um, uh, uh, the confirmation statements, et cetera, company's house usually don't give back the response immediately. It takes a while for them to give back the response. So you'll just need to go into the total filings made section to get the status from company's house. Um, so we've come towards the end of the webinar. Um, if you did have any questions, do post them on the Q&A and I will answer them. Um, and while we're waiting for the questions to come through, um, I'll provide the um, support details. So if you have any questions and you need to contact support, um, you can contact us via telephone. The number is 020-3021-2326. Um, or you can send us an email to support at nimisma.co.uk. Or if you go onto our website, you'll, you'll also be able to chat with us. So there are various ways in which you can get in touch with us. Um, and of course, what I'll do is once the webinar is complete, I'll send across a video to everyone. So uh, you can refer to this video if you did need um, to refer to it later. So we'll just wait for any questions to come. So we've not had any questions today. Um, so thank you very much for um, tuning in and watching the webinar. I hope this was helpful. Again, do get in touch if you needed any help. But bye for now and have a lovely day.